NASA looks at going to the moon one day and to Mars and to get to Mars, they're going nuclear. While there has been significant progress in space travel over the past few decades, we are still hampered by the speed of our spacecraft. Researchers have achieved speeds close to the speed of light for tiny particles, but larger items remain a challenge. It is projected that it would take a modern spacecraft equipped with the most advanced technology and five months to go to Mars using fuel-powered jet engines. We're on the verge of having airplanes that can fly from the ground up to the edge of space using nuclear power alone. NASA has been working on a mechanism that propels spacecraft to the Red Planet in as little as three days. Although this may sound a bit unrealistic, NASA has confirmed that the necessary technology is readily available and that the system could be easily scaled up. What is the logic behind this setup? How will NASA utilize it to securely transport humans to and from Mars? Why are people hoping to settle in other star systems? Join us as we explore the NASA announced insane nuclear rocket to visit Mars in days. Colonizing deep space can be done for many different reasons. One explanation is that potentially profit-making industries could thrive on other planets because of the abundance of metals and other natural resources, as well as possible energy sources. If the continued life of civilization on Earth is threatened by a nuclear war, climate change, pandemics, and population expansion, establishing outposts on other worlds could be a means to spread the risk and increase the odds of survival. Stephen Hawking, who recently passed away, was of the opinion that humankind must begin colonizing another planet within the next century. However, before humans colonize other planets, they will likely establish themselves on the moon. Since the Apollo program made lunar exploration feasible, a lunar base has been seen as the natural next step in human space exploration. Earth's natural satellite provides various benefits over more distant destinations such as Mars or Saturn's moon Titan. First, it's relatively close, which means personnel could get back and forth between the Earth and the Moon in just a few days. Knowledge gained from a lunar colony about how human space colonists respond to low gravity, isolation, high doses of cosmic radiation, and altered circadian rhythms might be essential for future interplanetary exploration. A spaceport on the Moon would be excellent for sending astronauts to Mars and other distant planets due to its low gravity and proximity to Earth. And in terms of long-term potential, the Moon is a vast area with lots of room for human colonists. However, life on the Moon won't be a walk in the park. The lack of an atmosphere causes significant diurnal temperature swings, with nighttime lows of minus 298 degrees Fahrenheit and midday highs of 224 degrees Fahrenheit at the equator. Micrometeorites and cosmic rays are also a persistent threat to its surface. Are you prepared to travel to other galaxies? There are two problems that need to be resolved before humans can begin colonizing a planet in another solar system. To begin, is it likely that there are other planets in the universe like Earth? The Kepler telescope at NASA has provided the definitive answer to this question. Kepler, a space telescope that astronomers decommissioned in 2018, discovered almost 2,700 exoplanets, or planets that orbit stars more than a thousand light years away. Gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn make up a large portion of the extraterrestrial population. The other planets are super-Earths, or rocky worlds only slightly larger than Earth. There's a chance that some of them could be suitable for human colonists. The second issue is entirely practical. How can we travel to a planet that is many light years away? People often picture massive rockets when they think of space flight, like the Saturn V that carried the Apollo astronauts to the moon. To send a tiny space capsule with a crew into orbit, that massive rocket burned through a lot of fuel. When the Apollo space spacecraft left Earth's gravity behind, it was propelled to the moon and backed by short bursts of fuel-burning rockets. New types of engines are required if regular trips from Earth to Mars and other distant destinations are to become a reality. Engineers are looking into cutting-edge new technologies that may one day allow humanity to travel the solar system more quickly. The distance between Mars and Earth varies from 33.9 million miles to 249 million miles due to their different orbital trajectories around the Sun. The closest approach between Earth and Mars is the ideal time to send a mission there. Chemical rockets, the most common type of propulsion, require nine months to reach Mars on one of these approaches. Anyone would consider that a lengthy trip. 
NASA engineers, along with their industrial partners, are hard at work developing new, more rapid means of reaching the destination. So, which technologies have the most promise? Elon Musk, the founder of the commercial space travel corporation SpaceX, has a surprise in store for those who believe that the idea of colonizing other planets is something out of a particularly far-fetched science fiction movie or novel. Many obstacles must be cleared before another trip to Mars may be attempted. NASA and SpaceX are the two main stakeholders. They collaborate closely on ISS missions but have different visions for a human journey to Mars. The concept that sending something into space is like sending something of great value remains common parlance. Only a fraction of the launch vehicle's mass is allocated to the payload. When Apollo 11 was sent to the moon, it was propelled by a Saturn V rocket, which weighed over 3,000 tons. Unfortunately, it could only lift 140 tons into low Earth orbit, 5% of its initial launch mass, and 50 tons to the moon, less than 2% of its initial launch mass. A Mars spacecraft can only be so big and have so many capabilities because of their mass. In order to ignite rocket motors, fuel must be carried aboard the spacecraft for every movement. SpaceX intends for its manned Starship vehicle to receive fuel from an unrelated refueling tanker sent into space. The amount of fuel that can be sent into orbit is much increased compared to what might be put into orbit in a single launch. Another difficulty, intricately tied with fuel, is time. Unmanned spacecraft missions to the outer planets typically involve intricate orbits around the Sun. To get where they're going, they do gravity-assist maneuvers, which are essentially a slingshot around other planets. This helps save a lot of fuel, but it may take years for missions to complete. It's obvious that people don't want to do that. The Hohmann transfer is the most fuel-efficient route to travel between Earth and Mars because both planets travel in, almost, circular orbits. Basically, without going into too much detail, this is where a spacecraft makes a single burn into an elliptical transfer orbit from one planet to the other. A Hohmann transfer between Earth and Mars takes around 259 days, between 8 and 9 months, and is only achievable approximately every two years because of the differing orbits around the Sun of Earth and Mars. Shorter travel times, SpaceX estimates six months, to Mars are possible, but at the expense of more fuel. Let's say our ship and crew manage to reach Mars. The next challenge is landing. A spacecraft entering Earth is able to employ the drag caused by interaction with the atmosphere to slow down. If the craft can withstand the increased temperature, it can land safely on Earth's surface. However, Mars's atmosphere is roughly 100 times less dense than Earth's. That reduces the possibility of drag, making a safe landing impossible without assistance. NASA's Pathfinder and Phoenix missions both used airbags for landing, while others relied on thrusters. The latter yet again has a higher energy expenditure. The length of a Martian day is identical to Earth's at 24 hours and 37 minutes. The thin atmosphere on Mars means it can't hold heat as efficiently as Earth does, hence life on Mars is typified by significant fluctuations in temperature during the day-night cycle. On Mars, the highest temperature is 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which may sound warm, but the lowest is minus 220 degrees Fahrenheit, and the average is minus 81 degrees Fahrenheit. In the middle of winter, the south pole of Earth may become as cold as minus 56 degrees Fahrenheit. As a result, we'll have to be picky about where we settle down on Mars and how we keep our homes warm at night. You'd float in the air on Mars because its gravity is only 38% that of Earth, but you can't breathe there because the air is mostly carbon dioxide and a few percent nitrogen. To survive there, we'd have to construct special housing with climate control. Greenhouses, solar panels, and, you guessed it, a fuel production plant for return voyages to Earth are just a few examples of the essential infrastructure that SpaceX aims to launch on many cargo flights. It is feasible for life to exist on Mars, and various tests have been conducted on Earth to examine how people would adapt to such an environment. The ultimate obstacle is the trip home and bringing everyone back to Earth alive. The speed at which Apollo 11 re-entered Earth's atmosphere was around 24,855 miles per hour, which was only slightly lower than the speed needed to leave Earth's orbit. Depending on the orbit they utilize to return to Earth from Mars, the spacecraft will have a re-entry velocity between 29,209 miles per hour and 33,544 miles per hour. If they wanted to penetrate Earth's atmosphere, they could enter a low orbit around the planet and slow down to about 17,899 miles per hour, 
but that would require more fuel. They need just charge headlong into the atmosphere, and the atmosphere will slow them down to a stop. All we have to do is make sure the astronauts don't perish from excessive heat or G-forces. There are technology building blocks available to overcome these and other obstacles to a Mars expedition. The development of reliable nuclear-powered rockets is crucial for interplanetary travel. These rockets must not only get to Mars but also return to Earth safely. Many people, like Elon Musk, hope to one day colonize Mars. Elon Musk has stated that he plans to move to a human settlement on the surface of Mars and that there is a 70% possibility that he will take a rocket there in his lifetime. Elon Musk, unlike the main character of the science fiction book and film The Martian, probably wouldn't be all alone on Mars. In 2012, he presented a vision for a Mars colony at a conference of the Royal Aeronautical Society in London. His goal was to have the colony expand to the size of a medium-sized city on Earth, with 80,000 residents. Elon Musk has proposed a private Mars colony, but NASA also hopes to one day set up shop there. The European Space Agency has considered building a European version of the Moon Village there. Meanwhile, futurists are planning for human settlements to be established on Earth-like exoplanets orbiting other stars. If you wish to go to Mars and leave humans on Mars, you can do that with chemical rockets. Getting there will be tough, but not impossible. To return humans to Earth, however, nuclear-powered rockets are almost necessary. And NASA is more concerned with returning astronauts to Earth. To go to Mars from Earth, another concept is to employ chemical rockets. However, some engineers advocate adopting nuclear thermal electric propulsion for the trip's central portion. In addition, researchers have created lightweight thruster technology. Instead, the electricity from solar cells is used to ionize stable gases like xenon and krypton, resulting in a plasma stream of positively charged ions. In order to move forward in the weightless void, the spaceship expels this plasma through its exhaust. Electric propulsion engines, sometimes known as plasma thrusters, are currently used by hundreds of GPS, military, and communication satellites to make minor course adjustments and keep their orbits stable. While the Deep Space One module visited asteroid 9969 Braille and Comet Borley, and the Dawn spacecraft visited the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, scientists are now developing a new generation of ion thrusters capable of sending spacecraft on long-distance missions throughout the solar system. Plasma thrusters represent the future of space exploration, said Ken Hara, an assistant professor of aeronautics and astronautics who is helping build computer models to improve the power, efficiency, and usefulness of ion engines. According to Hara, the plasma thrusters are vastly superior to their ancestors in a variety of ways. To begin with, the fuels utilized by plasma thrusters, which are ionized gases, are less in weight than the thruster fuels employed during the Apollo era. Every pound the spacecraft saves by decreasing its fuel load equals more weight to carry a larger scientific payload. Moreover, once a plasma-powered vessel is in orbit, it may accelerate over time in a way that fuel-burning craft can't, ultimately providing these lightweight engines a speed advantage as well. Why this is true requires an understanding of exhaust velocity, or how fast a propellant travels out of an engine. A large amount of fuel is burned at a low exhaust velocity in a conventional engine, resulting in a massive amount of thrust. Imagine a rocket on the launch pad, gently inching forward as it is raised by a massive billowing of flames, and then quickly gaining speed as the tremendous force that is generated breaks the hold of gravity and hurls the rocket upward. However, a plasma engine's purpose is different. It's used to drive a spaceship in zero or low gravity. To do this, the plasma engine expels ionized particles at very high exhaust velocities and very low volumes, similar to the way a person could exhale to drive a spacecraft. Puffs of ionized propulsion allow the vessel to gradually gain speed in the vacuum of space, allowing it to travel farther and faster than fuel-burning spacecraft. On another end, some researchers believe that one day humanity will be able to travel to Mars and back in 30 days using rockets powered by nuclear fusion, the energy source that powers the sun and other active stars. Long journeys, huge prices, and health hazards have hindered ideas for manned expeditions to Mars for a long time, but fusion-powered rockets promise to alleviate these difficulties. Energy is released when the nuclei of two or more atoms collide and fuse together, a process known as nuclear fusion. 
The sun and other stars use this mechanism to create light, while nuclear bombs use it to create destructive force. However, a more controlled procedure is required to use fusion to power a manned spacecraft. By applying a magnetic field to a particularly engineered form of plasma and compressing it to high pressure, nuclear fusion may be achieved. The team estimates that a fragment the size of a grain of sand would contain as much energy as modern rocket propellant. For a Mars-bound rocket to use this fuel, the research team suggests using a strong magnetic field to collapse massive metal rings, possibly composed of lithium, around the plasma material, compressing it to a fusion state for a brief period of time, only a few microseconds. The metal shell formed by the smashed rings would be heated and ionized by the energy released by these rapid fusion processes. The ionized metal would be propelled at high speed out of the rocket's tip. Researchers believe that if this technique was repeated nearly every minute, it could push the spaceship. The next stage for the team is to integrate the results of their individual, successful tests into a single, large-scale experiment designed to achieve fusion using this technique. Yet behold, photonic propulsion. Philip Lubin, a NASA scientist, has been working on a revolutionary method that employs lasers to propel spaceships with gigantic sails attached, allowing us to go to Mars in just three days. The photonic propulsion engine thrusts the spaceship upward by harnessing the energy of individual light particles. The photons in this system, it was mentioned, come not from the sun but rather from a massive laser. It may sound far-fetched, but some researchers have found that it's not impossible. There are recent advances that take this from science fiction to science reality. Currently, there is no known reason why we cannot do this. Traditional space propulsion systems rely on thrust that comes from burning rocket fuel. The system's inefficiency can be traced back to the fuel it uses. For its part, the photonic propulsion system uses electromagnetic radiation, which has no mass, to propel objects. This technology has only been tested in the lab so far and necessitates a ring of superconducting magnets similar to the ones used in the Large Hadron Collider, both of which are extremely complex and expensive pieces of machinery. This complicates efforts to increase the size to a level acceptable for interplanetary travel. However, in theory, photonic propulsion does function and is realizable. In short, the system operates because photons have energy and motion. A spacecraft's speed can be increased by reflecting an object's velocity off of a reflective sail. A 485-pound vessel may be sent to Mars in three days using the photonic propulsion system, according to scientific calculations. Nevertheless, the main value of the system lies in prolonged space travel as the speed increases with distance. Maybe we could finally set off on that inevitable trip away from home. A combination of technologies may be the answer in the end, demonstrating once again the importance of interdisciplinary and international cooperation among scientists working to conquer deep space.